Welcome back my friends to another video. So today we're going to jump into a very quick property update video. As usual, I'm going to run through the most interesting articles for this week. So firstly, did Boris Johnson leave the UK property market in good shape? My answer, no. However, you guys may feel slightly differently. And let's just jump slightly into this argument because there are a few things here that are worth at least considering and understanding before obviously we make a decision and also to help us explain why we are where we are in the current market. So obviously we had stamp duty holidays, which run between 2020 and 2021, which initially was a great thing for many people trying to get on the ladder. Saving a couple of thousand pounds seemed like the greatest thing in the world. However, as I always mentioned, they were definitely overpaying in the first instance. And as a result of this, it kind of caused issues for first time buyers as house prices rose and reduced the number of affordable homes on offer. Again, I always thought that was quite inevitable. Then we had the building of 300,000 homes a year. And that target just seems to be slipping away and seems less and less feasible as we move into, especially what we're going through now in terms of the whole crisis of inflation and the cost of living and all of that stuff. So unfortunately, just over 243,000 homes were built in 2019 to 2020, which is actually the closest we came to that target. So after that, yeah, we didn't ever get any closer. Then we had the rental reforms. And I'm sure many of you have probably seen my short video on this where there was essentially something being proposed where they were going to abolish the no fault section, as you can see there. And this actually caused quite a concern for landlords because they were unable to reclaim their properties quickly. But I understood it from a tenant's perspective where at least they felt like they were safe in their homes. But it swings and roundabouts. You can get a bad landlord and you can get a, and you can get a bad tenant. So really, I think you kind of need a system or something in place that protects both sides, ensuring that they're obviously adhering to their part of their contract. Then, of course, we had the right to buy scheme, again, an initiative that Boris tried to throw forward. Didn't really pick up as much traction as probably he had hoped. And then, you know, this article just kind of goes on to say, well, we saw plenty of support measures to boost the industry. I fully agree with that. There was a hell of a lot of printing of money. And even as we were printing that money, I knew that one day we were going to have to pay for it. And now, my friends, it feels like we are definitely paying for it. And as a result of all of this, it's left the property market quite volatile. House prices are rising. There's a shortage of affordable housing. And now just the highly competitive rental market, which I'll touch on in a few moments, that has driven up the prices for tenants. So as a result of this, millions of households are now struggling with the rising costs and are at a risk of slipping into fuel poverty as we head towards the winter season. Therefore, emergency measures need to be put into place for those that need it. So there's definitely worrying signs ahead. And speaking about worrying signs, UK average rent has now hit £1,051 a month. This is astonishing because not only is that figure up £115 since last year at this time, rent is now swallowing up 34%, well, actually just over 34% of the average income of a single earner, according to figures from property website Zoopla, which is really, really scary when we think about it. And I'm just going to leave a couple of images here that some of you may be interested in if you like your charts, just to have a look at in terms of the overall increase and obviously the rental demand as well. But the website also mentioned that the strongest performing urban rental markets are currently in London, which is obviously quite understandable, 17.8%, Manchester, followed by Glasgow, and then Bristol, where annual rental price growth is standing above the UK average of 12.3%. So even 12.3%, my friends, is a huge amount that many of us are now having to pay. So moving on from this, this is something that again, please take it with a pinch of salt. I'm not sitting here saying what these guys are saying is going to happen, but UK house builders, they're sharing their worries and they're saying that house price predictions is that things don't look good. And HSBC also expects the value of average British homes to drop by 7.5% with central London falling further. And that's very interesting because also HSBC published analysis predicting house prices in London could fall by as much as 15%. And then they go into further research saying that the demand for UK housing will fall 20% from this autumn because of rising mortgage costs and inflation. And I think also let's just add to that the cost of living. It's ridiculous what we're having to go through in terms of energy bills that are going to start hitting us from next month. Um, even with Liz Trusses coming in and saying she's going to cap it or work on that, I still think it's going to be a very, very difficult winter for many of us out there. And then just finally, my friends, shares of Red Row, Barrett Developments and Berkeley Group were down between 4% and 7% in morning trading on Friday after this. So there's definitely some of the bigger house builders, some of the most common ones that many of you are aware of now feeling the impact of the UK housing market. Moving on. So I haven't shared this on the last few videos, so I thought we'd have a quick update today. Halifax have said the typical property now costs a record £294,260,000. I'm sure when I started these update videos, we were around 250000 So even that is incredible, my friends. Uh, Halifax has claimed that the average house price has increased 0.4% month on month 
in August to hit a new record. And the rise actually offsets a 0.1% dip in July, which I think I mentioned and I got a bit of a backlash from. It is what it is. I just report the news. I don't make it up. However, the annual rate of growth dropped to 11.5% from 11.8% in July, which is actually the lowest in three months. So take from that what you want to take. But something I wanted to just touch on here is just quickly going through the London market because I know some of you are from London who thankfully watch this channel uh, with a typical property costing a record £554,718. London's average house price has risen by £44,669 over the past year. Absolutely bonkers. And then finally, my friends, I've just thought it'd be interesting for some of you if you want to see the average house prices in August and the average annual percentage increase according to Halifax. So screenshot this, do whatever you want with it. If you're not interested, smash that like button while you're waiting. Okay, let's move on. So next up, we have landlords looking to offload properties onto tenants, says brokers. And this is interesting because there were some articles about landlords looking to leave the market. And again, it's believed that due to a combination of the energy performance certificates rules coming in 2025. So essentially what that means is by 2025, the rental properties will need an EPC rating of C as opposed to it being E now. Um, then you've got obviously the interest rates increasing as well. And it just seems with the Section 21 potential paper coming out as well, there was a huge stretch on landlords. And it just felt that some landlords were looking to jump ship. But now they're looking to offload it onto tenants. Now, this is interesting because I get sometimes I get a lot of stick for being a landlord. Yet the majority of my properties have either converted from unused buildings, from commercial buildings, or I'm building them from the ground up. So I never quite get that argument that I'm taking something away. In fact, I feel like I'm adding to the housing market. However, one thing I have always offered my tenants is if they ever want to purchase the property off me at market value, that's absolutely fine by me. It's not a problem. However, moving on back to this, Shaw Financial Services founder, Lewis Shaw says he has indeed seen this play out. And what he's saying is that he's been speaking to some brokers. Again, I'm not sure how many brokers he's speaking to, my friends, but he's seen lots of landlords looking to offload parts of their portfolio. And I'm assuming, as it says here, they're either lower yielding or have EPCs below C. So they're probably thinking the cost to increase this EPC, whether they've got, you know, an E right now, which I hope they have to a C, maybe the costs are going to be too substantial that they're thinking it's probably better to jump ship. Now, I know this is a whole paragraph. I just want to quickly run through this again, my friends is for buy to let landlords selling to their tenants it makes perfect sense they can ask agents what the market value of the property is and then sell directly to their tenants to avoid any expensive agent fees not to mention the hassle of getting involved in chains moreover any reduction in price the tenants can use towards their deposit essentially reducing the capital gains tax bill by the landlord on sale so yes definitely a potential win-win there However, there are drawbacks as well. Not every tenant may have the finances to obviously cough up for that deposit. Some may have a poor credit history as highlighted here as well. So again, it's not going to be as simple as we think. In some cases, landlords have their own concerns as well. And this is something I just wanted to quickly put out there. There's a common misconception that all landlords are absolutely minted and have all the money in the world. But some of them have their own concerns of the cost of living, myself included, and some are now looking to cash in to ride out the economic storm ahead as it's looking very appealing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there, my friends. And with that, my friends, the only other thing I really wanted to just touch on was for you guys to just check out this video here, because I think it's a really important one, especially if you're in the buy to let landlord sector. But other than that, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for 17.6 thousand subscribers. Smash the video if you found it useful. And until next time, my friends, thank you so much for watching.